Alright guys, so let me preface this video with uh, me just saying uh, there is no specific one way to shoot for Vogue. Um, this particular photo that we're going to look at, it's not this one, but as you can see it's, um, it's actually on the Vogue Italia. Uh, it's not the actual magazine, so it's just Vogue Italia website. How it works is uh, you submit a photo and it goes through a group of uh, curators and they either choose to uh, approve or disapprove your photo and um, so far to date I've had two photos published on the website again not the actual magazine but still it is technically still on Vogue so as you can see the photo right there we're gonna go over today and then yeah so let's go over it so that's kind of the final photo right there but let me uh set up the day and kind of location location was kind of cool because uh we actually got to shoot at um a location where uh, many famous people actually had photo shoots and uh, kind of stories done uh some honorable mentions is kind of like childish gambino did his um his complex shoot here uh megan fox did her wonderland shoot here so it was a really cool place and i was very fortunate to have uh the connections when i was in la to kind of shoot at this place uh it was kind of funny a funny story we um we were actually um scheduled to shoot at a mansion uh just right off venice beach but um it actually turned into a crime scene overnight so we <laughs> had to kind of find a new place and this place actually was available so that's kind of the location the day is i believe 12 p.m we started makeup and hair and then around two to three we started shooting so uh the sun's out um just overhead and it's pretty harsh so um luckily this complex was had a lot of uh, indoor spaces, outdoor spaces. It was very big, so um, yeah. So let's get into it. So this is kind of uh, the first location we shot. This is one of the models we shot, or I shot, um, and it's kind of as you can see, the sun is coming in from kind of these slits. So it's not a sunroof per se, but it's just slits where. The sun would come in and shine through. Uh, you can see it right here a little bit clearer. So uh, you get this ni nice dynamic kind of slanted light coming in. Uh, yeah, and then it's just, it was at the perfect lighting. Uh, the sun was coming in and that's the kind of final shot or the raw shot you get out of it. Uh, I didn't do too much actually to her skin or anything like that. I kept it as um, kind of natural, uh, close to the raw image as possible. So let's actually get into the photo now. So uh, as you see all these layers here, Let's turn them off one by one. So the first layer is basically just neutralizing uh, the orange tones, uh, kind of making a more neutral and more truer tone to her skin color and the, the day that was ahead of us. Um, I added some hue and saturation just to control the intensity of it. So as you can see, like I could tr control the saturation, just that one photo filter layer. It's at a blue density is around 25, not too harsh or not too strong. So the exposure there is kind of just to um, balance everything out and flatten the image, um, bring out the, the shadows more, bring out the uh, midtones more. So it's not just a, a complete darkness on her actual skin. Uh, I took it a step further with uh, this one. It may look a little harsh now, but you'll see at the end result what it kind of uh, 
adds to the final uh, picture. Um, this one uh, is just a simple black and white filter. Uh, more of the reds, just getting rid of that. Uh, bringing those down. And here is where the final kind of picture play goes into place. So turn these off one by one for you. So the curves are there actually to just kind of add some dynamics. So you can see where that kind of this exposure layer kind of complements this curves layer. Um, it's not total black, but you can still see kind of some dynamic range right there. If you turn up all the intensity on the, your computer screen, uh, the gradient is actually there. So it brings out more of kind of this side. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I have a mask on her um, and it's only showing this portion of the picture. It's only affecting that portion. So the hue and saturation or the gradient map is basically there to, and you can play around with these. Um, you can add that, just add some flare or even just add some kind of like bring, bring out some more or add some dynamic range into her kind of cheekbones and stuff like that. And it just, as you can see, it adds to the kind of like final picture. Honestly, by the way um, I shoot today, I would have gone for something like this. I feel like um, this older process I've been going through um, is more filter based. And I kind of want to stay sure, but that's just my evolution of shooting and editing. Um, but for this one, is just basically a, a purple to orange kind of gradient and that complemented uh, the light coming in but as you can see if you change these kind of affects that you can see where it affects it and some of the colors blend in like that blends in that kind of blends in yeah and just changing that But the hue and saturation is there to also control this filter. So as you can see, that's controlling that. So uh, this technique was a modified version of um, a photographer's um, technique, uh, Charles Lusima. He's down in LA and he's the one who actually set up this whole workshop and everything like that. Uh, I was able to learn a lot from him. Uh, it's definitely, I do not uh, shoot like this uh, nowadays uh, my style and editing process has changed quite a bit um, but as you can see from the histogram I tried to stay or not to bring the blacks and, and uh, whites to the uh, full ends of their uh, respective spectrum so as you can see they're kind of there's a gap between the ends so none of this is um, uh, absolute dark or absolute white um, other than that that's kind of the final uh, photo the my older style of shooting and editing I wanted to mimic kind of have um, you know have the dynamic range of uh, a medium format or a film camera uh, not just have kind of the high contrast that um, you can get stuck in with uh, the digital realm. Uh, and again, you can tweak and everything with that, but what I tried to mimic was kind of like a photo film, have that dy dynamic range that the regular DSLRs kind of don't have. Um, this one, I'll see if I can go into the info for this what I was shooting at and what my settings were at. So it was at 7.1, uh, aperture 7.1, 100, 1 500ths of a second, ISO 200, and I had a 100 millimeter. Uh, and this was shot on a 5D Mark II. Um, but that's, yeah, what I shot with and what my settings were. Uh, they were pretty high, 
due to the fact that the, it was around 2 to 3 p.m. and we were shooting in kind of harsh light. But other than that, yeah, that's the final result and that's what got published. Uh, Matthew Von Pinneth was, I originally came with that name, but I just changed it to Matthew Vin. And uh, yeah, that's basically the photo breakdown of my first published uh, Vogusalia photo. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks for watching, guys.